In this episode, we'll wrap up Vicky's journey. We'll discuss words she still finds challenging and tackle specific issues like consonants and diphthongs and that flap T sound and more. And if you face difficulties with particular English sounds, this episode is for you. I'm Bianca, your personal American accent coach, and I'm here to help you master an American accent in English because your voice is your choice when it comes to how you sound. I try to release a podcast episode every two weeks, and so you should really subscribe to whatever podcast platform you use so that you don't miss the newest episode. And by the way, if you want to see the full video of the episode, it's available at Accent Coach Bianca on YouTube. Now, let's get on with the show. How are you today? Okay, let's try with the headphones. Ah, maybe that's know. better. Yeah, it's this... better. Yeah, just clearer because you're speaking so far. I actually got this one, but I just realized that it has the USB and my computer doesn't. So. Oh, really? And I think it's a better one. And next time, let me get something else. Yeah, something yeah, like no that. No yeah, and I'm also I'm try this small mic. I've already bought that, but I'm waiting for once they deliver. So hopefully awesome. next time we will have the better sound. Yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get better. Yes, and better. Yeah, look at you getting all the skills, getting all the equipment, all of that. It's a process. Yeah. Takes some time, but we're getting there. Both of us, we're getting there. So tell me about your week then. What you've been working on? What any specific questions you have? Any of that stuff? Yeah, I had a very sorry, my kids. My yeah, don't worry. I had a very productive week. I had my podcast about the U.S. banking crisis uh-huh. so cool. podcast and podcast mm-hmm. podcast, and Fantastic. it's already on, but it's in Russian. Shortly this time, but next time I will be talking about the same topics in English, mm-hmm. and we'll see how it goes. I mean. There were 2,000 people watching me at this cast show. And yeah, and we agreed for the next week, uh, podcast, yes. And your mouth is for both, podcast. Ah. So your mouth is quite open for both. One, your tongue is in the back, and then it goes forward. Podcast, podcast. No rounding of the lips at all. Podcast. There we go. Okay, so you had it in Russian as well, and that was a good, we can say, like a practice, like a dry run. And you had 2,000 people watching. That's great. Practice, yeah, and it's practice, you know, like... It's a practice how I look like, and mm-hmm. sound like. It was the first one. Like, we actually started with you, and yours was the very first. <laughs> and then that one was the first in Russian. And the next week, I'm going to record a podcast nice. um, about the Chinese banks. So I'm getting, like, more oh. in the banking systems. Yeah, yeah because the crisis, it totally hit one country, oh. one... Crisis, you know, one um, as in sister. Hit- Crisis. crisis no voicing crisis crisis, um, crisis. Mm-hmm. and it's already you know um, crisis in europe mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so in russia because of the sanctions they're more or less okay no money in no money out so they're fine but globally um uh, it's not a very calm time now it's like everything moves so quickly and mm-hmm. everything moves because so- it's now you said now is moving so quickly the capital is moving around the globe and there are some macroeconomics effects and nah. macro so macroeconomics mm-hmm. and that's a complicated word so we've we'll got extra syllable stress macroeconomics macroeconomics you've got Primary stress, two primary stresses, and one secondary stress. So macro, macro, and then ec- economics. So ma and na, those are two primary stresses. And then e is halfway. Macro economic. Macro economics. Perfect, okay. perfect. Macro economics. It's so um, difficult, that word. Yeah, you got it now. Factors, which, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, tough time, but we will survive. I have no doubt about that. Excellent, excellent. So you're okay, working so on, you're working on the podcast, what and what about any questions you have surrounding any vocabulary like that? Is there anything on your mind? Because I know you sometimes write down your questions, and I don't want to ignore that. Yes, I actually do. Let's see then. Let me pull it over. I'm just gonna bring it up. <clears throat> okay, word list. Let's see. Hold on a second. Here we go. All right. Okay, I'll put it in our chat box too. In the chat box. Yeah, we've got a yeah. chat box here. 
a a chat box like podcast but opposite chat cast chat Pod- yeah there you go like we're <laughs> bots and robots all right uh-huh. all right i'm looking at our list okay i'm looking at this one if you can see me highlighting it it's w a r d i like your notes already tell me about that word w a r d this one is also about the o oh sound which it can sound pretty different yeah. in where sometimes it's more like an award like a word or it's a Doctor, uh, one. So I was trying to guess what of it is in here because mm-hmm. it's a which or one? with the R, A and R obviously gives us or. I think it's not like an award type of thing. It's something like war. Got ah, oh, okay. Let's see. Did you see the Did you see the Oscars? I'm writing a sentence here. Okay, I'm gonna put another one. The oh, warden God. of the prison. There's a couple different meanings here, right? Or similar words, but it doesn't matter. Their pronunciation is always gonna be the same. It's gonna be the first one you talked about. Or, as in, would you like chicken or fish on your flight, right? Or, or. It's not the letter O. It's A R, but it still sounds like or O R. Does that make sense? Ward. Michelle Yeoh won an yes. award. Ward. The warden of the prison is late. Okay. Okay, good. Problem solved? Or I uh-huh. should say question answered? Yes. So beautiful. Yes. It's a good one. So the in all cases, a war um a ward, uh the warden is still or, right? Yep. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a look at that for a second. W-A-R-D or anything, because you're on the right track. A-R should be R, like arm or a car or far, right? You got a good one. But when I've got that D, W-A-R-D for sure, or, or, or. There's one, you might know this one. It's another word for Shakespeare, because you know you like literature. This might be a thing. They used to call him a name. They would call him the bard. And then we've got R there. Bard, Mm -hmm. arm, car. The bard is another name for Shakespeare. So we've almost got the same spelling. B-A-R-D, W-A-R-D. You would think, oh, it must be the same. Nope. W-A-R-D is always or, just to kind of talk a little more about that. Does that make sense? Totally, yes. And I was trying to figure out what is a trigger, which, you know, makes it or versus R. So the W is a trigger. So Yes, uh, exactly. And that's why I brought up the other examples, because I know your brain works that way. Your brain wants to know more and why. And that's why I brought that up. Yes. So it's that W that's a trigger. And it's all D that helps a little bit, but it's definitely that W. Yeah, that's a good trigger, I think, to think of that. Excellent. Let's move across on the side. What about this one? Okay, again, I was trying to figure out which O out of all O's. That could be, given that the J sound is like more, to me, it's like a strong one. Casual, casual. So there's two vowels. The first one is a schwa, k, k, k. And if we're looking at the letter O, k, k, Joel. You might know a person named Joel. So it's going to be the schwa, k, k, and then for the A sound, and then O, O. That's the diphthong, O, O, k, Joel. And you might even hear this thing, I like to call it a sneak. Schwa. Because why? In dictionaries, if you look up the dictionary, I'm going to go ahead and put the transcription here. If you look up in the dictionary, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see that. K, Joel. But if you listen really carefully, you might hear a little uh, uh before that. K, 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 Joel. Oh, right? If your ear can hear that, that's awesome. Most people do it, but the dictionaries don't write it because it's too detailed. And most people don't care about that, but we care, you and I. So I'm going to stick that in the transcription. I'm going to stick an extra little schwa there, and it happens before an L, and it happens before an R sometimes. I'll give you an example. Here's an easy one. F-O-U-R. Before an R. Four. Can you hear that er at the end? Four. Four. A lot of people can't hear that. But if you can hear it, great. I like to call it sneaky schwa. That's before an L or an R sometimes. And here you've got that. So it's cajol. Did all of that make sense? Was that helpful? Cajol. Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. Yes. Like my guess was cajol. Cajol? Mm-hmm. But it's cajol. Cajol. Like, yeah, I really have that diphthong. Not only the diphthong, but also that little extra schwa in there, which you're not going to see in the dictionary because they only do wide transcription. They don't do very narrow transcription. Some dictionaries do, but they're not my favorite dictionary, so who cares? Okay, okay. I think with yeah. this one we already did. Stomp. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. I think we were thinking of that. Stomp. A. Yes. Uh-huh. Stomp. Stomp. Exactly, because O's are different. This one is almost exactly like the one we just did. Cajole. If it's O, what's this one going to sound like? Where? 
Exactly. Overt. 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 Syllable stress on the first one. You got it. Overt. Is there a way you can guess? No, because English is terrible and O's are the worst. Overt. Overt. And just to know, there's some... How should we say? There's both syllable stresses are possible. You can say overt, which is what I do, or you can say overt. So both are correct and it depends on what other people are saying. That's what I'm going to say. So the syllable stress can be a choice here. That's not common. That never happens. Overt. Overt. Overt, 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 but the vowel isn't going to change. Does that help? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then we'll go Don't back. Work. We'll go over some of the ones we already talked about in a second. Let's do a couple more. Go ahead. Okay. The four boring. So that one was not about the dip or like O's. I think I'm pretty much sure that it's a four boring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to understand how you pronounce the letter D because I cannot place my lips to in make this it sound. one. Oh, like, so good. Really Such good questions. Exactly. Okay. So this is something, I don't know if you know the name. It has a name. It's called a flap T sound. This D is going to sound like a T. Okay. I'm American. I say this word. I don't say water. What do I say? What do Americans say? Water. Like, exactly. That T sounds <laughs> kind of like a D. In some languages, maybe in Russian, it sounds like an R in a way, right? How you might have an R. Water. Better. Later. Right? We call it a flap T or we call it a tap T. Because let me find my mouth model. Okay, so on the mouth, the mouth, you're going to, you're going to touch the bump, right? The bump uh -huh. here. D, 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 dog, daily, dairy, D, 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 really pushing hard and releasing that D. Dog, daily, dairy. You're really pushing hard. But in this other sound, flap T, tap T, you're just. Just hitting it really fast. Water, better, later. Water, better, later. There's no huge explosion. Water, better, later. I'm doing really fast. I'm just chuk, chuk, chuk. I'm just tapping it. So that's what we call a tap T or flap T. doesn't matter. It's really clear here, right? Now in this one, listen to me and tell me if it's exploding and it's really, I'm pushing hard or if I'm doing that, that tap. Ready? Foreboding, foreboding, foreboding. Which one does it sound okay. like to you? An explosion or a tap? Tap. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we have what we call it tap T or a flap T or a D. And that's what you're seeing here. We find that, boom, between vowels. Doesn't matter if it's single or double. Water, better, later, foreboding. I'm just tap, 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 right? So I think what you're hearing is perfect. Does it make sense how to do it? Yes. Now I, um, it should be more like faster. Faster, and yep. Like yep. It's not the explosion, it's just just the tap. It's exactly, tap, tap. exactly. And that's particularly Boarding. between uh -huh. vowels. Or what we call liquid sounds. Yes. Liquid. What's a liquid? I'll tell you in a second. Or semi. Semi vowels. This is important. I'll tell you why. We just earlier we mentioned this sneaky schwa and I said, Oh, watch out. It comes sometimes before an L or an R. Why? Why would why an L? Why an R? Because we have what we call liquid sounds. Probably when you were in school, when I was in school, the teacher said, hey guys, there's consonants and there's vowels. End of story. Not true. Not end of story. It's not black and white. We've got vowels and we know there's a continuum there. And we've got two that are continuum. Think about that D we just said. D. D. A true D, I'm really exploding it. I'm stopping the air completely and then I'm letting it go. So there's a continuum between vowels and consonants yes. about what I'm doing with the air. So we've got vowels, we've got semi-vowels, and those are, I'm going to write this down, Y and W. And then we've got liquid sounds, vowels, semi-vowels, liquids. Liquids are L and R. So why do we call them liquids? Because they sometimes behave like a vowel, right? Think about a lr. I'm not really stopping the air like a D. I'm just kind of shaping it, right? Here's an example. We've yes. got water better later for boating. All of them are between vowels. What about this word? Dirty. Dirty. Somebody's going to say, hey, that's not between two vowels. Yeah, like, yeah, but it's between a liquid, an R, and a semi-vowel, a Y. So I would normally tell people, oh, it's only between two vowels. But I know that you, Vicky, want to know it all. So when there's a T or a D between vowels or exactly. liquids or semi-vowels, you're going to get that tap or that flap, that quick D, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, probably more information than you originally wanted to know. Yeah, but I love that. And by the semi semi vowels, you mean yeah. which vowels? Like tongs or Ys and Ws. Semi vowels. Y and W is always the case. I love how you said diphthongs though, because you're right. When we hear a diphthong, let's go back up to this one. Overt. 
don't you hear like a w in there o o o verse yes oh ow i'm going over here bows i'm going up a little higher the main diphthongs o i a and oi anytime you have a diphthong you can really hear either w o ow or a y a a i yeah. uh -huh. oi right so you're totally, your brain's connecting all these dots because we use semi-vowels always in diphthongs. So that's another good connection there. Does that kind of answer your question? It does, yes. It's beautiful. <laughs> Look at, we're on a roll today, man. We are hot today. Look, only three more on your list already. Awesome. And then we'll go through the whole thing from the top. What about this one? Okay, that one is like, we had that word, which was like the war, right? And mm -hmm. now the same letter, but in different order, yep. makes like makes me you know hustle. I, I like ori or auri or ori. So like, let's start. Uh, there's two syllables, the right? Two syllables. So let's break it up, yeah. right? You're seeing some of the same letters, but that's tricking you because that really has nothing to do with it. I think. Let's start at the end. How do I say this letter? Why? There's a couple of possibilities. What do I say? This one. Okay. There's a kind of bread. This kind of bread. Are you familiar with that? Rye. Yeah. Exactly. I. I. Yes. So the second part of the word is rye. 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 What's okay. my favorite right. sound in English? What's the most common sound? It's going to be the first syllable. Rye. Schwa. Uh, rye. Uh, uh, rye. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Easy enough. So I think you were like, oh, look at the spelling here. Maybe I can pick something up. But in fact, it wasn't related. And that's English. That's yes. not you. So it's awry, awry. Yeah. Almost like arrive. He was late to the party. He didn't arrive until after nine, let's say. Yes. There we go. Yes. Oops. No. Oh, my God. Yeah. What are you thinking right now? That's the spelling which came to my mind when mm -hmm. I read the word. But now I know. Yeah, because the spelling is different. Okay. So, mm -hmm. arrive, arrive. Same thing there, except the end, obviously. We look at you. You're on fire today. What about this one? Okay. That one is tricky because it has four vowels in the end. <laughs> and does. like, I can cope with a couple of them. Like, <laughs> ooh. Yep, yep. Like a book, right? Yeah. Oh, but like a book. I... Not book. Not but, gooey, uh -huh. but goo. Okay, but and then E. I know there's four letters, but there's only two sounds there. It's oo and it's E. Gooey. Gooey. And that oo, how far it is in the mouth. Ah, all the way back. Ooh. 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 Back. Think of a monkey in a zoo or the word zoo, for example. What does the monkey say in the zoo? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Same thing. Goo, goo, gooey. Tongue all the way back and then all the way forward. E. Gooey. Gooey. Great word, too. What made you put this word yeah. on the list? We've got exacerbate, awry, and then gooey. It's a funny, funny mix. Yep. Okay. The exas oh, it's hard. Four syllables. Exacerbate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the tricky for me was, it, is it S without like sound exacerbate? You have the best questions. Okay. All right. I'm going to put, I'm going to put a word up here and <laughs> you're going to tell me. All right. How do I say that one? How do I say that letter X? Box. It's like a K and the S, right? That's it. That's your first option. K and S. Box. Wrong. Often when I see letter yes. X, K and it's X. X, right? It's X. X. Two sounds is not its own thing. Yes, exactly. X, X, X. Box. Box. Okay. Now, that was your question, right? Ah, I see an X. Mm -hmm. Is it X or is it Z? Because you probably hear both, right? You're not going to like or. this answer. The answer is either one. Exacerbate or X. Exacerbate. Ah. Whichever one you like. And I think that's because it's letter X. And in okay. the past, in the past, they would say X. But it's kind of falling out of favor because it's difficult to say. So I think the more popular one is with a Z. But there's no problem saying both right now. Does that make sense? Yes. I was thinking maybe because between the vowels again, but it's not S, right? So it's mm -hmm. like Z. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's more tricky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. exactly. Okay. See if you can do the. See both. I love this. All right. Word. What's the difference? Look at these two. This is voiced. G -g 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 -z -g -z -g -z. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a G and a K? Nothing except voicing. G -g -g -k 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 What's the difference between an S and a Z? So the only difference is one is the voiced combination and one is the unvoiced combination. Ex exacerbate versus x x. Ex ex try them both exacerbate perfect Exacer and the other one okay i prefer exacerbate yeah me too it's the more common one yeah it's a more common one so you'll hear both but we'll both you and i will both say the the first one all right look at you man high five looking good today we finished our list yeah right and let's go let's review the list from top to bottom what do you think Let's do. All right. All right. There we go. All right. Let's start at the top then. All right. I'm going to highlight a word. You tell me what it is. Uh huh. Arch. Perfect. This one. Dowsing. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I think we said this S, it's like the other one. It can be voiced or unvoiced. It can be dowsing, dowsing. singing in the shower sing. or dowsing. Or sing. Yeah, exactly. What about this one? Invaluable. Yes, yeah, exactly. Invaluable. This one? Abated. Oh, ah, very yeah, nice. And this- Excellent. Abated. Yeah. Look at you. I thought, oh, it's been a while. She's going to forget all these. But no, these all sound great. What about this one? <laughs> okay, that one is tricky. It's tricky because of so many letters. Okay. Ear mongers. Ooh, Ear-monger. so close. I-, I was looking at that R and M. That's perfect. Ear-monger. Just that last O. Mon. Mongers. Mongers. Ear mongers. There we go. And syllable Ear-monger. stress. Ear mongers. I'm going to write Write this down. Hold on. Fear mongers. Exactly. Fear mongers. Fear mongers. That's got primary and secondary stress. Fear mongers. Fear mongers. Fear mongers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Good job with the secondary stress. All right. This one has two. One is this and one is this. And the vowels are different. What would they be? Okay. The vowels are vowels and both. Hey, there we go. Yes, exactly. Now on to today's stuff. Let's this this one. Ward, like a ward. Ah, uh, sorry. No, no, no. It's not ward. Yeah, there we ward, go. Like a ward and like uh-huh. a ward. Yeah. You got it. You got it. And this one. Kajoel. Uh huh. Kajoel. Kajoel. There we go. Slide, glide those vowels a little more. Kajoel. Yeah, exactly. Kajoel. Glide better vowels. They're <laughs> gliding together very gently. Exactly. Let me tell you how you sounded before. Kajoel. See uh-huh. what I mean? It was a little okay. bit choppy. And Kajoel. normally you don't do that. But I know you were yes. kind of overthinking it. Yes. All right. Look at this. Next one. Yes. I was trying to sound. A word. Ah, you're doing this one. Syllable stress on the first one. Do this one. Da-da. Over. There we go. And the reason I'm saying that is because it's not wrong to do it that way, but it's more common to do it this way. Overt. Okay. Overt. There you go. Let's hear a good D here. A good flat D. For boarding. Uh, Very nice. For boarding. Boating. 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 It's going to sound just like this. Go down to the water. You're going to go boating. Right? We're going to go boating today. Oh, that's very foreboding. Look at the sky on the water. It's all black. That's very foreboding for our boating. For boating. Okay. For boating. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. What about this one? Awry. Excellent. Perfect. This one? Gooey. Oh my God. This is like a final exam today and you're passing with flying colors. What about this one? <laughs> um, excess, excess, exacerbate. There we go. Gzz, yeah. Like I'm going to make eggs. Exacerbate. Exacerbate. Oh my gosh. Last one. Last one. This one. Um, laceration. Ah, great job. Yes, your secondary stress is sounding really good. It's right in the middle. And this is the hardest one when it starts at the beginning. Lacer, lacer, laceration. Excellent. Excellent job. High five. You're on fire today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yes. No kidding. So tell me, what's the deal right now with your visa, with your travels, with like any anything about that? I haven't heard the update. Yes, I'm still I'm still don't have an update either. So oh. I'm waiting for some final confirmations, but the good news is that a friend of mine, an old friend of mine, he is visiting Mauritius early April. At the oh, same yeah. time, I want to go there. So hopefully, I haven't seen him for, I don't know, maybe 10 years or maybe maybe 8, quite a while. And huh. he's going to be there. I'll do my best to nice. arrive to Mauritius uh, the same time. Like, whatever they do, I want to be there. Oh, that'll be okay. so much fun. That's really exciting. Congratulations. So you get to go see your friend, maybe pick, hopefully, fingers crossed, pick up your visa. That'd be great. Yes. Nice, nice. And how about work? I'm planning my U.S. trip. I know that I don't have my visa yet, but I am a big believer in that psychologically that I would be preparing for the things I want to have. So mm-hmm. I'm going to buy, even though I don't have visa in, in hand, but I will still still buy my ticket to show my intention to the universe, to myself. And yeah, I'm gonna, I'm planning my visit to the US end of April. The U- so hopefully the US. my plans, the US. So mm-hmm. my plans hopefully will be heard. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, yes. definitely. Definitely. Yes. Hopefully it'll all work out. And now you're just like, now you can focus on your content, on what you're presenting. So you've already had that practice. Exactly. Having in Russian, we've had practice with us. Is there anything that you're thinking about that's making you miss about the actual experience of podcasting? Or do you feel like calm and prepared now? Well, uh, you know, in the beginning, I tend to be like you know, a little bit nervous. But once I start talking, it goes away. Mm-hmm. So I it's some um, entry or what how you call that ice break yep ice breakers something like that mm. train so mm. i wouldn't have feel stressed at okay. the beginning and then offline makes it easier 
because even though 2,000 people was watching, I didn't notice all that. Because if you go on stage and there are 2,000 people, you will be like, oh my God. And it was my screen, like we talk to each other. <laughs> yeah. So podcasting can be, it is good for me for practice and for trying to figure out what I'm going to say, because sometimes you don't always come prepared because people may ask questions and you might change your like in the middle of something you were go going to say so yeah i need a little bit more practice and you know sometimes when it is too good it's no good 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 uh, something too good good too good it's no good i love that yeah it's not good yeah because it's too polished so you need to practice all these pivoting things all those questions Please. i'm getting used to that but yeah you said but but what's the but i'm but getting used not. to that but it's always difficult for sure but i need more practice so mm. i am trying as much as i can to find out to find an up talk to speak to even think loud like at home you know <laughs> i always try to say something aloud to make sure that i uh, uh, that do you I, record uh, yourself yes. do you record yourself daily like a video a day or an audio a day is that something to do not yet that's a good idea yeah you could easily because but even now with me good, it's... you're like okay i'm gonna have a class with bianca we're recording i'm gonna get ready set up that can be a habit that can be a routine that becomes easier for you and if you want if you don't have recording software i have a website it's not mine of course but it's a website for teachers and students where they can communicate with video. So if you want, I can set you up with a special recording room just for that. And you can go there every day and talk about your product and talk about markets and banks and things like that and just rehearse and practice. What do you think of that? I think it's a brilliant idea. It's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> I am not that like tech savvy, even though I work in tech, not that tech savvy as you are. So it will be a huge help. All right, I'll set that up for you. That's no problem for me to do. And I'll send you some instructions. It's easy. You just click and you sign in with either Google or Microsoft with your email and then you're in and you record it and it's just private between us, right? So you can use that as a space to practice. Thank you. Yeah, a brilliant idea. I will do just that. Perfect. And I will Perfect. try to do that every day, maybe two days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. As much as you can. The more, more is more. Okay, so I'm going to set that up and I'm going to send it to you. I'll send you the link on Discord and then you can get started whenever. All right. Thank you so much. Yes. Anytime. Anytime. Okay, yeah, let's okay. say goodbye for today then. And I'll send you that link on Discord a little bit later today. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Catch you soon. See you soon, Vicky. Bye. Bye. If you found this episode helpful in any way, please subscribe and leave a review. It's actually really helpful to me. Now, before I go, I have two tasks for you to do. First, I want you to register and come to my free monthly masterclass. They're on the last Thursday of the month. In just one hour, you're gonna master a specific American accent skill. For example, the TH sound or rhythm. The Zoom registration link actually changes each month. So the second and maybe more important thing I wanna ask you to do is to sign up for my mailing list because you're gonna get the registration link each month and you're gonna get bonus materials before and after the masterclass that I only send to my email list subscribers. The email opt-in link is down in the show notes. Be sure to sign up for my mailing list and come to the monthly masterclass for free. I'm Bianca, your personal American accent coach, and I want you to know that your voice is your choice. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the show. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.